Hi, my name is Tim. I'm on the support team here at Papercut. And today we're gonna to take a look at installing Papercut onto a Mac. First things first, um, before actually jumping into the Papercut install, we're just gonna make sure that we've got everything set up on the Mac itself, um, ready for printing. In this case, we're actually gonna use um, Mac OS Sierra, um, so 10.12. Um, but it really doesn't matter as long as it's a, a more recent version of, uh, of Mac OS. So Yosemite and El Capitan be exactly the same kind of thing. On this machine also, we're going to dive over into System Preferences and into Printers. And you'll see that we've got three printers already set up and they're already shared on the network. So we're actually just going to install a fourth printer just to run through um, some of the basics of making sure that that's set up correctly. Um, so just click on the plus at the bottom to add the printer. And then we're going to use the IP button at the top. Type in the, the printer IP address here. So in this case, we're going to use 10.1.10.101. And most importantly for the protocol, you're going to want to use HP Jet Direct socket. So that's basically telling the Mac to use a socket connection to chat to the printer, which is um, definitely the most reliable that we've found so far. Under the name of the printer, call that whatever you'd like to. So in this case, I'm going to call this the drawbridge printer. And you can also add a location if you need to. So, call the castle front. I'm going to add that printer and just add the duplex printing unit that the printer has in this case. And then you can see that that's now been added to the list of printers on the Mac. We're also going to make sure that this printer is shared on the network. So we're going to check that box there too. At this point, definitely a really good idea to send a test print job through to the printers. Um, just make sure everything's running from the server point of view. Um, and then if you're gonna be setting up workstations to print through these shared print queues, definitely worth getting those attached and send some test print jobs through there too. Um, if you're wondering how to add printers on the workstations themselves, um, we have a couple of handy pages on papercut.com. So head over to the website and in the top right hand corner, um, that's basically the key to searching all of the knowledge base articles ac across Papercut. Um, so in this case, if we uh, do a search for Mac hosted print queue, then in the results, we should get Mac hosted print queues for OS 10.8 plus. So here you can see the steps that we're going through for installing the printers. You can see we're recommending the HP JetDirect socket connection there for adding the printers to the server. And then if you scroll down that page, you'll also come across the setting up printers on the Mac workstations. So you can see here, printing from the workstation to the Mac, you'll want to use IPP in that case. So once we've got all that set up, we've tested it, everything's good, um, we're ready to install Papercut. So if you're using Papercut NG or you're wanting to, to try out the trial, um, head over to papercut.com under products, Papercut NG, you can then use the download free trial link. So there you can fill in your information and then download the, the trial and get that installed. It's exactly the same if you're using Papercut MF or if you already have a, a licensed version of, of either of those two. Uh, so we're gonna cheat a little bit here. We've, um, I'm gonna jump over into Finder and, and look at our downloads folder. So we've actually got the, the PCNG 16.3 set up here. Uh, we're gonna take a look at that and open that up. So when you first open the Papercut NG um, disk image, you'll see three separate packages. Um, we're gonna kick off this Papercut NG standard install um, just to get things going. So double click that 
that will install the, the PaperCut um, application server, as well as it being able to monitor all of the local print queues on this machine. So that's those four that we've just set up. So click continue to that, check through the end user license agreement and agree to that. I'm going to just use the default install location here and type in my machine password. And that's now ticking along through the installation. So it shouldn't take too long for that to complete. Um, in the meantime, uh, the other two packages listed here, um, there is the PaperCut NG site server install. Um, definitely an advanced topic, um, but if you're interested, head over onto the, the papercut.com website, type in site server, um, and it'll give you a tour of um, exactly what that can do. Really useful in um, multi-site configurations. Um, the other one here is the PaperCut NG secondary server install. So that would be used if you have more than one print server. You would drop the, the secondary server install onto your other print servers. Um, likewise, maybe you have a, a really specialist printer um, and you always want people to be able to, uh, or a certain workstation to be able to print directly to that printer. Um, in that case, you would install a secondary server install onto that, um, that particular workstation too. So yeah, just to repeat, for the um, initial PaperCut NG application server install, we've just used the standard install package. So it's just uh, finishing up there by the look of it. Oh yep, yeah. <laughs> right on time, that never happens. Uh, so then we will say close to that. Since it's successful, we're gonna keep that just in case we need it later. And then as you can see here, it's actually launched the, the, um, the default browser, in this case Safari, um, where we can configure the rest of the, the paper cut settings. So first up, it's gonna ask you for a, a default password for the admin account. So make this something secure. Um, the admin account is built in, so um, make sure that you've got that password stored somewhere safely. I'm gonna create my super secure password here. Uh, you can also, also set the location if you need to there. Uh, I'm gonna remember that now. Um, so organization type, um, here we're going to just select education. Um, so this doesn't mean that it's a separate product at all. It's the exact same product that you're going to install. Um, the only difference is that there will be some differences in the default settings. So for example, if you have a um, client billing situation where you want all of your users to actually select a shared account or a project um, when they print each job, then that would be the default setup when you select professional. All of those settings though can be changed later, so don't, don't fret too much about that. So we're gonna select education, and then we're gonna set the, the default color cost for our, our jobs. So I'm gonna say 20 cents for color, and be a little bit generous here with the, the five cents for the grayscale. Next to that. Set an initial user credit. Uh, maybe we'll give everyone $20. Um, and then we're gonna deny access when users run out of credit. So if, you, if you're if you just wanting to install PaperCut to monitor at the moment, um, a good idea is just to uncheck that box. Um, that means that even if people are printing a lot and they go down to zero balance, um, it won't deny them printing. Click next to that. So then at this point, it's gonna ask us where we want to pull our users from. Um, in this case, it says Mac standard, which means that any users that I've got set up on this local Mac server um, will be imported into PaperCut. Um, you can also select LDAP if you've got an LDAP um, directory up and running, um, and then you can connect to that and pull in all of your staff and users and that kind of thing. Here we're just gonna say import all users. Get a little summary there and I'm gonna click finish. So now we're gonna get, get a little box popped up just uh, talking about the initial user import. Close that. 
And then the final checkbox is just about the, the privacy policy. So if you take a quick look at the privacy policy, nothing creepy in there, um, but feel free to uncheck it if you like. Um, and then say login. And here we go on the, the front dashboard page of, of the console. So first thing, um, given that it's a fresh install, we're gonna check out the printers tab. And you'll notice that there aren't actually any printers listed here. So there, there is the template printer. So that lets you um, set up costs and settings and, um, and scripts and that kind of thing, which will then become the default for any printers that you then add to the system. So it's not a, not a real printer as such. Um, it's just the template that will be used when when you add any new ones to the system. So let's let's get these printers added to Papercut. Um, so what we want to do here is head over into Finder again, and go into Applications, and you should then see a Papercut NG or a Papercut MF folder. Head over into there, and then you should find a Control Printer Monitoring Command file. So run that and terminal will pop up. Put in your machine password. And then it's basically gonna ask a quick question about modifying the sandbox configuration. What this means is, is basically giving Papercut permission to, to monitor the print queues on this local machine. Um, so in this case, you're gonna say yes. And then you're gonna see a whole list of printers um, that you've got configured on this machine again. So as you can see, Banquet Hall printer is the, the top one in the list there. Um, it says currently disabled. So to enable paper cut monitoring, we want to say E for enable. And we're gonna do that for all four printers, which should pop up. It's then gonna return and say that the process is completed. So that should then have all of our printers added successfully. We're gonna head over into the printers tab now. So we're just gonna to go to um, one of the other tabs. So we're going to jump into logs and then head back into printers. And you can see that those have now come through. So it sometimes takes a, a little while just for cups to um, to restart there and, and the printers to show up. Um, if you do run the control print monitoring script and then you head over into printers, just give it a second. Um, if you're still not seeing them there, rerun that control print monitoring command um, and just make sure that you can see everything is listed as enabled at that point. Um, if you're still not seeing them in the interface after that, um, it's worth just sending a test job to one of those print queues just to kind of kick cups a little bit and get them showing up. So at this point, it's a really good idea just to send a test um, job to the printer. So um, let's pick one of these printers, press print. We're going to send this one to the dungeon um, printer. And you're going to say print. And see it's queued up. And hopefully you'll be able to hear the printer in the background whirring up. Go back into the printer list again, refresh that, and you can see there's now one page listed here against that dungeon printer that we sent the, the job to. So just to go into the logs to actually see the details of that job, if you click on the logs tab at the top, we can then see November 30th, um, the job was sent by me. I'm logged in currently as Tim. Um, and you can see that it was sent to the castle server um, and the, the printer was called the dungeon printer. Uh, it was a one page, so it, it pulls up that cost that we had assigned earlier. So a really handy little um, troubleshooting step is to just look in the logs here to see if you can see the job coming through. Uh, if you're printing through a workstation um, and you're, you're not seeing the job appear in this log for some reason, um, 
definitely worth making sure that the, the workstation itself is printing to this particular shared print queue and it's not printing directly to the printer. Um, so worth checking that. If uh, you've checked that and everything looks good, just also send a job from the server itself to one of the printers and see if that's picking up correctly. Um, just begin to narrow down where the issue might be. Um, if you do have workstations that need to print directly to the printer, um, then that's going to need what we chatted about earlier, which is the, the secondary server install. Um, so if you do need that set up, head over into um, papercut.com. Oh, let me get my clicks right. Papa Murphy's. Yeah. Um, papercut.com. And then on the top right hand corner, if you do a search for secondary server, then you'll get all of the manual and KB entries for installing that secondary server. Definitely worth a look through there. So next steps, um, now that you've got your, your Mac server up and running, um, you can also use that for iOS printing. Um, again, feel free to, to jump over into the KB, um, check out iOS printing too, and get that set up and try that. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.